namoradinho. Quando venga Anthony tu vuoi sai. Anthony viene per aquel lado per aquel lado. Ladies and gentlemen. for the Pledge of Allegiance, and Patricia Nunez will lead us in the Star Spangled Banner, and Miss Peppa Bonet will lead us in Lift Every Voice and Sing. Can everyone be that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America.
getting to know such a wonderful group of young men and women. Your parents ought to be very proud of you. It, this class is epitomized by determination, strength, hard work, kindness, and that, that's the key. I've seen these young people help each other out, lend each other, each other money, buy each other lunch. I mean, it's unbelievable. And it's a testament to your, your parents, really. It, it, I, it has been such a wonderful honor to be in your presence, and you will be missed so, sorely. However, I know that as you go forward, you have learned many great lessons, and you will have positive impacts on everyone with whom you come in contact. And I am so grateful that I had this opportunity to be part of this journey with you. I wish you all of luck, the best of luck and success, and I don't lose an ounce of sleep at night knowing that you will go forward and do very good things with your mind and, and make positive impacts on this world. I love you and will miss you. Congratulations. This year would not have been what it was without my wonderful co-advisor, Ms. Catherine Torres. I love you guys. You At least I have my towel. I told Mr. Lapori I'm gonna need a towel for today, so. Uh, unlike Ms. Le Ms. Eversley, I needed to write my thoughts on paper. So please bear with me, class of 2005, since it'll be my last. Uh, I'm sorry. Last words to you guys. Graduates, I would like to take the time and share with you what I truly value and hope you have learned from me, your history. Okay, let me get myself together. Because <laughs> it just doesn't sound right, okay. Today we introduce our commencement ceremony with Lift Every Voice and Sing. 
a song that was first performed in the 1900s in Jacksonville, Florida by a chorus composed of 500 school children. The song was originally a poem written by James Weldon Johnson and ultimately became a way for African Americans to demonstrate their patriotism and hope for the future. It was a song that spoke against racism, Jim Crow laws, lynching, segregation, and other injustices of the time. This song inspired African Americans to persistently struggle for equal rights and treatment. This chorus of young African American children was a cry for justice and equality. These students had a vision, courage, and determination to overcome these prejudices and seek what was rightfully theirs. Frederick Douglass stated best, without a struggle, there's no progress. We have learned that in this imperfect world, determination is the key to victory. Your willpower is what will shape your future. It is the strength that would inevitably lead to success. I recall significant leaders and their accomplishments. With conviction, Dr. Martha Luther King taught nonviolence, resistance, and civil disobedience rather than bloodshed to gain righteousness. With conviction, Dr. Pedro Aviso Campos, rather than led his nationalist party in Puerto Rico for liberty, he became the brave voice for his people. With conviction, Susan B. Anthony fought endlessly for women's right to vote. With conviction, the poet Pedro Men wrote about the social and political injustices in the Dominican Republic. With conviction, Nelson Mandana lounged nonviolence boycott, boycotts against apartheid. These were leaders whose struggles have impacted our lives today. They envisioned a better tomorrow for all people regardless of race or gender. Today we are able to celebrate together because of their patient, I'm sorry, because of their passionate movement that led to triumph. Today I stand in front of you, in front of our present leaders. You have learned a very valuable lesson these past four years, having self-discipline, courage, perseverance, and compassion has awarded you to take part in this graduation ceremony. You have overcome many personal and academic obstacles. Living and studying in the South Bronx has been a challenge, but never a barrier. Remember your ties to your community. As you say goodbye to your school, South Bronx High School, your peers, and give me a second, okay, your teachers, remember that your community, whether it's the corner Dominican bodega, the Haitian street vendors, or the elderly Puerto Rican man selling piraguas, our people in our community need you, their leaders, to come back and make a difference. The South Bronx is in need of change. Consequently, it is the poorest borough in New York City. However, it's rich in culture. This is where we have studied, where we live, and where many of our families migrate to. As tomorrow's leaders, I cannot emphasize more the need to give back. You are our children's role models, their mentors. As I leave you to, en as I leave you to enter the next journey of your lives, I hope that the teachings that both Ms. Everest never give up, never doubt your potential, always take pride in yourself, and always celebrate your achievements, even if it's by yourself with the joy of saying, I did it. Che Guevara stated, only as high as I reach can I grow, only as far as I seek can I go. Only as deep as I look can I see. I will always have you in my heart. You guys are lucky to have had a teacher like that. I'm telling you, that was beautiful. <laughs> At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce your principal, Mr. Felice Laporte.
Before I begin my speech, I would like to take this opportunity to thank some of the people who have made this day possible. First and foremost, I'd like to thank each and every parent and guardian of the students sitting before me. Today, I congratulate you for your perseverance and dedication. I wish to also thank Mr. Richard Kahan, a man who has continually sought to make New York a better place for our children. To Santiago Tavares. the former principal of South Bronx High School and the current local instructional superintendent of the South Bronx campus for his unwavering loyalty and commitment to these students. I would also like to take some time to thank Mr. Reynolds, Mr. John Molina, Ms. Pepper Bonet, Mr. Bob Armstead, Mr. Frank Alone, Mr. Lou Schlanger, Mr. Jahani Garcia, and Ms. Cazetta Slay. <laughs> this year was an easy year for me to be the principal of this group of seniors. And that was because of the loyalty and dedication of the two women that were here before me. Without Ms. Eversley and without Ms. Torres, many of us would not be here today. So I personally want to thank them for everything they did. I also want to thank Father Bowler and also Bob Gompret, the headmaster of Fordham Prep High School for allowing us to have this great graduation in this theater. Graduates, Shakespeare wrote, we know what we are, but now, but know not what we may be. You know who you are today, where you have come from, you must never forget. You, oh, I apologize, <laughs> where you come from. But you must also never allow your beginnings to limit what you may become. It is very easy to say that it is a rich man's world that we live in. But I ask you, what does being rich really mean? Does the word rich simply mean have a lot of money? If you think so, then you are sadly mistaken, for life itself can be rich. From this day forward, you control your future. You are young adults searching for what you may be. I encourage you to choose to be rich, and by that I mean that I encourage you to make choices that will enrich your life and the lives of others. The road to richness is not an easy path, and there will be times in your life that you forget what I have told you about being rich in life. But these are lessons we must all learn. True riches come from hard work, perseverance, and dedication. Your success depends upon these things. No matter how you choose to enrich your life, it can be done with the simple application of these three things. What we may be is not determined by what we are but by how we choose to enrich our lives. Orrin Hatch, a U.S. Senator from Utah, once said, there is a good reason these ceremonies, commencement exercises, graduation is not the end, it is the beginning. Graduation is the beginning of what you may be. It is the beginning of your enriched life and you have within you all that you need to achieve your goals. I wish all of you the best as you move forward and use, uh, 
Choose your path to enrichment. Thank you. Daisy, where's Daisy? Daisy, raise your hand. Daisy asked, Ms. Torres, please say some words in Spanish. And um, so I'm gonna try, Daisy, for you, okay? Yeah. Giovanni, do you wanna come up here, Giovanni? Am I putting you on the spot, Mr. Garcia? Come up, Giovanni Garcia. Miren, eh, me, me tomó de sorpresa, pero en esta ocasión yo creo que no, no hay que sentarse a preparar algo, porque nosotros sabemos el tipo de estudiantes que tenemos enfrente de nosotros. Ha sido una maravilla el poder, eh, yo llamarme al asistente director de este grupo de estudiantes. Eh, todos los días, eh, la forma en que ustedes se comportaron dentro de nuestro edificio, la forma en que ustedes demostraron que ustedes sí podían, que tenían que echar hacia adelante, me daba mi inspiración y sé que a todos nuestros compañeros, a nosotros también seguir hacia adelante. Solamente quiero decirles, miren señores, suerte, sigan bajándose para adelante, trabajen fuerte, que el, el cielo es el límite para ustedes. Los queremos mucho. Now here's the benefit to being around this class. I understood 90% of what Mr. Johanny said. <laughs> My Spanish has, you know, just improved greatly over the past 10 months. Um, at this time, we have a musical selection.